In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the performance tab of the Chrome developer tools. And the example that I'm showing here is from this article, get started with analyzing runtime performance from Google developers page. I'll link to that in the description. And for this one to really work, and also when you want to do performance checks, you usually want to check a slower computer than your own because your development machine is pretty fast. So you can go here on the settings on the performance and select throttling on the CPU, select four times slowdown, for instance. And you see now the animations are much, much slower. So these are apparently JavaScript animations. We can also throttle the network if you want to check the network performance as well. But uh, in this one, we're just checking the JavaScript and animation. So then we just record to see, to get some data about performance. Just a few seconds will last and say stop. And then it loads our profile. This takes a little while, so we can get some coffee while we wait. Okay, and here it is, the performance data. It looks quite scary at first sight, but it's not as complicated as it looks. There's just a lot of data here. Uh, first, I'll give myself a bit more space. Take this one up here and move that one down a bit. And we can also, we can zoom in both with the, the usual way, with control or command, plus and minus, plus for zooming in. And we can also select an area. Here we have all five and a half seconds, but we can select an area, say I only want to look at this. So it kind of zooms in, not that much, it just selects it, but it zooms in down here. So here we have on the these green ones, they are our frames. Every single frame is one green bar, like this one. That's one frame. And the height of each bar is how close this frame is to run at 60 frames per second. And it's quite low now. It's actually really, really low. And that's why we get the red marking up here, telling us that it's too low. We can also, for each frame, we can see them here. Here is what we have down here is this, this zoomed in version. So we could say the top part here, that's kind of our overview. And then we have the zoomed in version here. And I can actually click one frame and then I can move around with WASD. I can scroll to the next part. I can zoom in and I can zoom out. And what we can also see is that these frames are not 60 frames per second. We have 11, we have 11, 12, 12, and 11. They are very, very slow. This is really bad. And if I expand the frames, I can just see uh, a picture of what was on the screen at that time. This is not really relevant now, but it might be relevant if you have specific animation that um, that slows down as a specific part. You, you can also hover over them here and see how the screen changes. So between the screenshots and this bar chart of the frames, we have this CPU graphs that with different colors shows us what the CPU actually does during each frame and how much time it spends on each thing. And if we click here on main, and then we can see a summary. And this summary shows us how much time is spent just during the selected part here. If I select more, we can see it's during all four seconds. And the yellow part is scripting. That's our JavaScript. This purple part is the rendering. We come back to that. And then we have the painting and then something the system does. And then we have idle. And right now we see we have a lot of time in rendering. To understand what this means, we have to look at the pixel pipeline or whatever we call it. And I find this article here to be very enlightening because it usually says we have some JavaScript 
that sets some styling on an uh, on an object. It mo sets its top or its background color or something, and then the browser calculates what style should it do. The yellow part that's our JavaScript. That's what we've written. The rest is the browser. First, it calculates the style. What does it mean? What does this background color mean? What does this top position mean? What does this transform mean? Then it does some layout. If it has to relay out the page, for instance, if we add a new element or we make something display none or display block, then uh, the browser has to recalculate the layout. Then it has to actually paint everything that means it has to create all the pixels that should be shown on the screen the background and the text and the images and so on and because it paints everything in in layers on different boxes it doesn't actually paint the entire screen it paints different blocks of it at different times then at the last time it has to do some compositing where it brings all the painted areas together and what we want to avoid in our code is that well, of course our javascript is as, as it is it might we might be able to uh, improve that but we want to make this part here as short as possible and if we somehow can avoid doing the layout and the paint and just doing the composite then it will be a lot faster because as we see here in this example we have all of them if we change width or height or position left top then the browser has to recalculate the entire layout for the entire page. And yes, that even goes, if we change left or top for a pos absolute positioned element, the layout for everything is uh, recalculated. It seems a bit dumb, and it is, but that's the way it, uh, it goes. So we, we, we can't save any time on that. If we somehow skip the layout, if we just change something like a background image or colors or shadows um, or blurring something, then we just have to paint it. We don't have to recalculate the layout because it has the same size, the same position, and nothing apart from the element itself get affected. And if we can avoid that as well, if we just change something that changes the compositing, if we just say we want this to have an, an a different opacity, for instance, then it doesn't have to re be repainted. It's just when everything is collected together, then the compositing should happen. So things that only require compositing is a lot quicker than those that require all of them. And we can actually see there's a page called CSS Triggers that I will also put in the description that gives us all the CSS properties and tells us if they cause a layout, a paint, or a composite change in either browser. We have Blink, that's uh, Chrome, Gecko is Firefox, WebKit is Safari, and Edge HTML is, I think, still Edge. So we can see if we do something like, let's scroll down to, yeah, just the background. If we change the background color, that gives us a paint and a compositing. If we change something like top or left or the height, we get a layout change and all of the rest. We get a layout change with that one as well. But if we look at something like opacity, that only gives us a, it actually gives us a paint and a compositing on the first change, but on subsequent changes, it only uh, triggers a compositing and so on and so forth. But as long as you know, we want to avoid having all of those three, just one, for instance, transforming only affects the compositing. So transform translate only affects one, whereas moving top and left, and uh, let's see where's top there. It, yeah, that influences everything. So uh, if we use top, we get slower performance on the on the layout, and this style and layout that is our rendering combined. And as we see, we spend a lot of time in there. And so let's examine how much time.
if we give ourselves a bit more space, then we can see here in the main, there's a lot of detailed information. Let's just zoom in to some of it. We can see we have an animation frame fired and a red marking here that tells us that this takes too long. It just gives us a warning. warning. It took 75 milliseconds. Doesn't actually tell us how long it should be, but it should be around 16 milliseconds. And we can also see some more detail here. The rendering alone takes 53 milliseconds on this. So let's see what's going on. We can see this animation frame that results in a function call and that results in this app update. That's a function call we have. And that again results in several style recalculations. And we can actually see each of them. And now we are running out of space. This links to our uh, code directly. It says here if we have a recalculation forced. That's something we don't really like. We don't like it to be forced recalculating all the time. And if we look into the code, we can actually see that this line it takes 3000 milliseconds. That's three seconds. That's a lot of time. It And it, the only thing it does, see, it just asks about the offset top. It doesn't even set it. Just asking about offset top actually results in a layout calculation. We don't want that to happen. And we can also see here it does changing some offset top. Whereas uh, checking if a class is there only takes six milliseconds. That's not long. And we have this one. For instance, Oh, it's it's not for one line. It's uh, how much time is spent on this line in uh, in total for the for this this marked uh, period of time. So this, of course, is extra hard when it's not our code that does it. But we can uh, for certainly we can see that it's not good and this part is what is not good and this is what we would have to update or optimize and a lot of it would be like changing top and offset top and once again we can look to our css triggers and we can also see is there something about offset 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 no it doesn't actually tell us That's not it. Okay, so even though we have these um, even though we have these CSS triggers here, we also have something that's not CSS, that's JavaScript. We have things that force a reflow. So let's ask force reflow. What forces re layout reflow? A comprehensive list. And I'll link to that as well. So this means that if we call any of these, also if we call get bounding client direct, that forces a layout reflow. So that means it's something that we don't want to do in an animation. Maybe before, maybe after, but not during. And if we have this, if we said scroll to, or ask about the scroll width, Scroll height during an animation that delays it. Also, get computer style will force recalculation and all of these things. No. Property requested. Ah, oh, that's the get computer style that forces these. Okay, good. So, again, in the performance, we can see what actually slows us down and we can get an idea of where in the code it is that it slows down and then we can fix it and run yet another and run yet another and in this example they have made this button 
to optimize the code. It's very convenient. So let's try and rerun clear and rerun a profile and let's see. Stop it there. And let's see if that gets better. We can already see now that there's nothing red. The frames are they are not 60 frames per second, but they are certainly not, not 10 either. And what is going on in each frame? We still use a bit time of recalculating style because there is a bit of code that changes the top. So we could change this to a transform translate and we would probably get completely rid of these performance bottlenecks. And I actually, I want you to try to do that. I encourage you to do this experiment. Try to create an animation that uses top left and run the performance on it, and then try to change it to transform, translate and run the performance again and see the difference. So enjoy your new performance work. There's much, much more in this performance tab. For instance, all this down here, and you can also set a, some different um, advanced paints instrumentation but this video is just meant as an introduction to the performance tab and all these advanced settings will be for another video